Okay, welcome back everybody. So next up we have Dr. Kenny Chua who will be sharing about Google Education tools, you know, handling large groups of students. Guy, uh, he's from UM and I'm sure you'll learn a lot from him. So over to you, Dr. Kenny. Good evening everybody. I'm Dr. Kenny Chia. I'm from the University of Malaya. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share on your conference. I'm doing a self-recording at the moment. So from the comfort of my home, right now it's, in, it's about 7.30 p.m. So I hope that uh, this video will be able to benefit uh, some of you who are attending the conference live. Uh, fortunately, I'm afraid I cannot join your conference because I have uh, existing training. Uh, to attend to uh, and apologize ahead of schedule. So without further ado, I would like to bring your attention to my screen and I will share to you my um, slides. Okay, so as you can see from here, the title of my presentation today, uh, I will put it on the full screen. Okay, the title of my presentation today uh, is, is uh, on uh, teaching large classes. Okay, so I'm here to just share to you some of my experiences, uh, perhaps also to share with you some useful tips and ideas about how do you actually conduct uh, teaching uh, with Google Education apps and uh, related to what are the key points to consider uh, when you prepare for a class that is large uh, and also at the same time uh, going through the process of how do you um, wrap up everything um, and provide a follow-up for the class. Okay, so um, there are many things uh, to consider when you are embarking on this uh, situation of post-COVID-19, right? So a lot of you are probably doing flip learning in your from your offices or from your from your homes and uh, you just to relate a bit uh, I teach classes that are large uh, 
which is about 120 students. And uh, during these lessons, I have to uh, give them a project that has to be completed within one semester. So uh, the idea of uh, handling large classes, uh, sometimes the information that you pass out to them uh, can be misinterpreted and can also be um, mis misunderstood. And you want to avoid, the last thing you want to avoid is that the students come back to you on your WhatsApp every night or, to, or out of office hours to ask again the same question. Uh, that the instructions about the instructions or the, about the way they should do their work and things like that. So, so those are the things that we are, we are trying to avoid as educators because uh, we have to give upfront clear information and our expectations. Uh, and then from there, we expect them to carry out the project successfully. Uh, and without relying much on whether they are doing things right or wrong. Uh, because at the, lab, at the tertiary level, we are, work, we are helping them to be uh, independent, to be critical thinkers, and to be problem solvers. So when you are giving them this kind of journey of learning, they, they want to take away their, their fears of uh, doing the wrong thing, especially uh, given the fact that today the internet has so much information and solutions to the stated problem that you give it to them, right? So let without further ado, let's let me just continue on the next slide. So a large classroom is uh, one with more students than available facilities can support. So that's how uh, internet defines it. Okay. So in terms of numbers, large classes have more than hundred students enrolled. Uh, but however, there is no fixed number. I think large classes are very dependent on and it's very relative, relative to um, uh, when you're comparing with uh, when you're comparing your own class with other classes, or when you're comparing within one lecturer to another lecturer, right? So some lecturers can handle a large number of students, uh, while some lecturers can only handle up to twenty. It also depends on the ability and nature of the course that they are embarking on. Okay, so let me just close this off. Okay, and um, so there is no fixed number. And how do you actually control a large classroom? So that's the question that we want to um, look at. And here are the few key points to consider. All right, number one, uh, we have to rely on the internet uh, or the internet or what we call the software that we have today and to rely on our judgment on how do we actually concentrate on students and, on the students and the students' work. So because when you're learning online, right, it can be very challenging because your mind is working while you're talking to a screen, right? So the ability to concentrate, right, uh, on the content and the process of delivery can be, can take you out of uh, reality, all right? Because it's done virtually, right? You don't even actually know what the students out there, as a recipients of information that they can really get. What is the quality of learning that they experience? Which is very difficult for us to evaluate in from two, right? We can only evaluate after the class. So during the engagement, uh, how do we actually concentrate on these students and the students' work in the learning, especially, would be one question uh, to think about, all right? Number two, um, the success of an emerging large classroom also look at the deliverage of potential of teamwork and collaborative learning. So that's why in the later few slides, I will share to you why teamwork and collaborative learning is very important and it should be one of the important aspects to look at uh, when you're dealing with large classrooms, okay? Number three, um, we also look at how we promote active learning through selections and appointment of students representative. So halfway through the learning, we want to break them into smaller groups we want to appoint students uh, that are capable. And sometimes this appointment is we have to leave it to them because they themselves know uh, who, who their own strength. Uh, they will know who they want to follow and who they will also know uh, who they can work together well with, okay? So number four, uh, we have to practice teaching effectively, okay? So there are times when you have to give enough time to allow students to reflect on the questions that you give them to especially in the content that you just delivered, whether they, they've understood uh, the information, whether they, they understood how to apply it, 
and etc. Okay, depends on your 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 method of evaluation. And as teachers who are teaching online, we need to allow stops and questions that is sufficient enough for them to reflect. So judging this time and the opportunity for, for reflection is, it is uh, I would say, it is very dependent on your ability to sense, your ability to be aware, and your, your response to their feedback, okay, after the class, sometimes before the class, during the class, or after the class. So I'm sharing to you uh, some information that perhaps you may need to write down because uh, this information can can be coming from the slides itself, or it can also come impromptu as my thoughts uh, come along. Okay, so number five is allow meetings for one on smaller groups because the group is very large. You must allow, uh, you must allow other sessions with smaller groups. Okay, it can be done before, or it can be done after the class in special cases. Okay, so that that will be something for you to facilitate and look at. Okay, now. Times have really changed when you think about large lectures rooms, okay? So in my university, I'm teaching courses that have large uh, classes and they come from different faculties because it's an elective. So times have really changed today because of the COVID-19. Uh, you can find that uh, people are learning from home and the lecture halls are empty, right? The, the facilities are overtaken by dust, you know? The, work, the buildings are all, the university campus is so quiet, right? And sometimes uh, semester itself, it seems to, to me like a semester break itself. So that's what's happening. And you can see that uh, note-taking has also moved on from just writing a lot or scribbling a lot of their notebooks to taking photos. And eventually today, when you're teaching, uh, you can see this is a symbol of skipping school. Right, people, 1990, people skip school, this is the scene. Today, skipping school, it symbolizes like this. Right, so, so uh, we, we may, even if we see these two symbols on, we may not know whether the learner is behind, is engaging with us or not. Okay, so just a bit of sharing a bit on the psychology of learning. Right, uh, when we look at this triangle, it's important for us to look at how, uh, if you look, if you look at, the pyramid itself, right? You can see that um, uh, the levels, right, from describing, okay, uh, to demonstrating, to analyzing, as you move down, this is not the most economy, yeah? this is just a like, pyramid. Uh, as you move down with more difficult tasks, okay, just like you, you move up the rooms of economy, people actually remember uh, more and more and more. Okay, so when you just explain or when you just talk with the talking online, then you can only remember what they read and what they hear and what they see. But how do you actually do this and do this, right? At the higher level, especially when you're dealing with large classes and your mode of teaching is online, then because you want to them to achieve this level, okay? So that's where you can uh, use these things again, all right? But and to some extent, this is where it's challenging, limited, given the limited amount of technology we have on our hand. But with Google technology uh, today, we are already deep moving into simulation like Google Earth. Uh, okay, Google Earth, you can Google up yourself, you can check it out what's Google Earth. People can, uh, you can go anywhere in the world and just look at, study about culture and history. Okay, that is using some simulation model. And to do the real thing, they, the students are, they, they can use uh, their mobile phones, they can use their mobile phone as their technology tool to present their content or design present their homeworks or their assignments and they post it up in youtube uh, as one of the ways to assess their outcome of learning okay so there are a few preparations you can look through number seven there are seven here i can show you one uh, in order to prepare you must know the students that are not in front of you physical terms and even though he or she appears online this may not be true all right you have to anticipate that, number one. Uh, so you have to at least uh, turn on the mic and ask them to say something if you sense that it's too quiet over there, right? Or they may need to switch on the video webcam all the time. Uh, at least you can uh, even give some chats uh, there, right? 
prepare yourself ahead and master the right technology to address the learning needs. Okay, so again, you need to prepare some tools. You must learn the technology that is provided by Google Education uh, in order for you to prepare and address the learning needs. Whether it is a content, whether it is something that you're learning the process, and most importantly, it's always relating to your own context and your organization context. But three, we have to set up an appropriate atmosphere and, and landing page for teaching and learning. So this is true. Uh, you need to actually have your own, at least uh, put your, your, your learning content into a, your own manageable system. It can be as simple as a blog. It can be as simple as a web page. Okay, so you can do that and put them in one place so that students can always access, not just for this cohort, but it can be other cohorts as well. And in our case, the first two first few classes, uh, when you're dealing with large classes, students always assign group up front and explains your terms and expectations. Okay, so why do you why do you need to break them up? It can be during the session or after the session, and it, it is also for project management together. Uh, they really want to do okay, and uh, always remember, sorry, always remember that the importance of uh, emphasizing on group conversations, okay, and encourage the students to interact among the groups will take some time. So if they are already knowing each other in the first few first few days or first few sessions of the class, then it's fine. But there there are class there are situations when you divide them into groups and these students may not know everybody else and they may need some time to have the break uh, ice break session among themselves before actual teaching and learning can be carried out. All right, so number six is to monitor and motivate your students through engaging content and call to action activities. So sometimes you may give them activities that is requiring them to do something. It can be before the class, it can be during the class, or it can be after the class. So that will be ways for you to think about how do you monitor and motivate, okay? And uh, be ready to ask for assistance because we do expect that technology can break down. So sometimes you need to come in a bit early um, before the real session can be conducted, just to check uh, with uh, for, for troubleshooting. So you may have instructional coach in your school, you may have technological leaders and trainers who are specialized in uh, whatever you need. So what, in terms of hardware and software, you need to have uh, at least some basic knowledge on Google Education apps. Uh, some of us at our level already familiar with Google Education apps, so you may want to look at some other add-ons you can put on your Google Chrome, all right? So if you do not know what is add-ons, you can just Google up as well. It's basically some other complementary apps that is used together within the Google applications to enhance your teaching and learning. Stable internet is something which is important. I use uh, my own Unify at home, but I also have a standby on my Maxis data plan just in case uh, I the Unify breaks down or, you know, and, and things like that. So it's, it's very important to understand why. So the next point is headphones and microphones. I leave it to you because sometimes the headphones, uh, some of you choose to have a wearable one. But for me, I prefer to split it where I have the earphone. I have my speaker and my microphone and, uh, differently. Okay. So the rest of it, uh, just some basic information. Okay, so this picture basically tells all, all right? Uh, when you're conducting a large class, right? So we are, for me, I'm sharing to you from my experience, I will prefer to use Google Classroom because Google Classroom has its functions and uh, features to manage people uh, out or into the groups, and into the individual level. So within the Google Classroom, you can, you can attach with can work together with documents, sites, uh, Jamboard for whiteboard collaboration. Uh, this is uh, PowerPoint slides, Google slides. This is Google Sheets and of course YouTube. So over here, everybody can access the information. Now, when it comes to 21st century education, you may want to break down your session with Google Meet while you're doing your screen sharing, right? You want to break down them into smaller groups. So this can be planned into four other sim or five or beyond uh, simultaneous crash, uh, rooms where the students themselves will work collaboratively with the Google uh, spreadsheet 
Google uh, sheet, whether it's a sheet, whether it's a document, or whether it's a slide, and they come back together and we can continue the work from there. Okay, so this is how it goes. So, I mean, this picture tells all, right? This, uh, this picture answers my main question, really, on the purpose of my presentation today. And to learn in any one of these within, I think you uh, you will, you have you can access them from YouTube. All right. So it depends on the content. It depends on the context. Uh, and it does like for example, it also depends on your ability and your readiness to apply these technologies within your fingertips. Okay. So there are ways to learn. And there are ways to apply. So you may need to work together as an individual together with your department. Uh, how do you deliver best deliver your course online, especially to large classrooms, and especially how we want to touch on the higher order areas here in order for them to really um, remember what they see. Okay, so engagement with digital technology is very important. It's one of the tools today that we can use uh, to address the need for learning online, especially large groups. So these are a few points. Uh, uh, addressing how to teach large online classes. You, you want to warm up first, uh, be acquainted with as many students as possible. Let them know you more than you are able to know them because they are more, you can't remember all the names, right? So let them know you first. Uh, let them know your style, your teaching style, so that they can adjust to their learning style, to, to your areas, okay? So let them know. And create a student access room for breakout sessions up front, as I mentioned, arrive class early, uh, and uh, ask students to identify themselves by name. Okay, then when you ex exchange with students, show make sure that they switch on their videos and take in the rest of the groups. And you can use group picker for fun or name picker so, uh, applications for fun and engaging activities. So this one, I think you can also see, you give an example uh, later on, uh, a group picker, how does it look like? A group picker will look something like this. Uh, you can just go to Google and type Name picker. So in fact, name picker, okay, name picker, a random name picker. So you can just click on this. You can key in all the students' name, and in fact, there are different different activities you can do uh, to just and, and this is all run through uh, what you call it? random uh, random apps, which is very interesting. Okay? So I can show it to you. Okay, as the Okay, there are many forms. You can even have a dice. Okay. There are many. This is a common picker wrong. One to the wrong side. Name picker. Okay. So there can be the wheel of names. Yeah, wheel of names. Okay. Hopefully there is a sample here. Yeah. You can see this is a stitch. And then you can see how you look like. Yeah. For example, here. Yeah. So you can edit the names and then you can spin. Then you spin. Right? So you can just show. Okay, so this example, all right. So you can just play around with it when you have time. Okay, now we move on to our next section. Um, where we talk about classroom management strategies. So when you're dealing with large classroom, we must also not forget that uh, there are three things to look at. Number one, student engagement. Okay. Number two, instructional strategies. Okay, how you're going to deliver the content. And number three, the classroom management itself. All right, the, the, the behavior management part of it. All right. So you are dealing with large classrooms, so you may not know who you are teaching, if especially the ones that's outstanding, right? They have outstanding behavior. So, uh, but if let's say you're dealing with negative behaviors, then you may need to identify and uh, bring the discussion or bring the train, uh, the discipline outside. So in another session in another room. So there are, uh, we can do modeling, right? Praise and credit group behaviors. Let the student establish guidelines during the breakout rooms. You can use document rules. You can write down your rules and highlight if necessary up front. Uh, but again, because there are many people out there who is online, uh, they have different perspectives on a the behavior. They can interpret a the behavior wrongly. 
So you may want to avoid uh, punishment, intimidating or any embarrassment in the online session because you may not know what is the extent of the outcome from that behavior, you see. So it's like, uh, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. So, so we cannot predict behavior, you cannot predict the actions, even though the actions may be as simple as just reminding people to come early in a tone that you use to remind the students to come online early. So there, there are uh, different ways of, uh, of reacting to that statement, okay? So uh, encourage initiatives from students and use non-verbal communication when necessary, all right? When you're explaining difficult terms and concepts, just switch on your video webcam and show it with your gestures and even interesting pictures so that they can hold their attention, all right? And allow students to hold their meeting beyond the classroom. Okay, always remember there are things that you want them to achieve through problem solving. So allow them to meet beyond the classroom online. So you may want to create different little, little, little rooms or you can connect with your WhatsApp, okay? And other ways that you think creative they can use, all right? So in overall, universal classroom management strategies could be adapted for online teaching. So, uh, Studies have actually shown that uh, size class is very important, all right? Why do you need to have breakout rooms? Because the smaller the size, the, better, the more effective for teacher to reach out to the students. That is a common uh, knowledge. And uh, this study has also shown that smaller schools are better than larger ones. And today, with online technology, you can manage, okay? You can manage, it's just a way of approach is different. And you really, you really have to use your knowledge that is developed through practice and you must get evaluation constantly on the outcome of your teaching. So uh, here are some of the advantages if you are breaking down the large online classes into smaller ones. Okay, so here you can read and I will provide this slide later uh, to your organizer. Okay. All right, so there it goes for my presentation this evening. I hope that uh, you all can benefit a little uh, through my sharing for this conference. So I hope that uh, you can forgive me if I've said something wrong or I mistakenly share something that will is, uh, may not be necessarily beneficial for you. So I just hope that uh, you all have a good conference ahead. And this is my email. So thank you so much again for your for your attention and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.